Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Amazon Smart Air Quality Monitor. So this is a nifty little device that I picked up about a month ago, and what it does is it connects to your phone and it can monitor temperature, humidity, carbon monoxide levels, volatile organic compounds or VOC levels, as well as particulate matter in your air. So it's got a little port here and that sucks in the air and then it uses sensors to measure all of those things and then it will track it on your phone and you've got hourly, daily, and weekly updates that track through your phone those levels of temperature, humidity, volatile organic compounds, particulate matter, and it gives you an overall indoor air quality score. So we've got a video that shows you how to set this up. Go ahead and take a look at that in the links below in the description. But it was really easy to set up. And then once it's set up, I was able to use it on my phone in about 10 or 15 minutes. Now after that, it does have a calibration period. And for the sensors to be accurate, I think it takes about two days for that initial calibration period to go through. So the question is, why would you want an air quality monitor and what could you use it for? So what I've been using the device for is to monitor the temperature and humidity levels in my basement. I'm also doing some work down there, so I was creating some dust as well as doing some painting, so we introduced volatile organic compounds and I've got a furnace down there, so I was able to track if there was any carbon monoxide coming out of that existing furnace that is a little bit older. Commonly, furnaces and water heaters are sources of carbon monoxide, so it's good to be able to monitor and see what is happening with carbon monoxide there when you've got a device that uses natural gas. So in my experience, it was very accurate tracking humidity and temperature in my basement, but what I thought was really interesting uh, was when I was creating dust down there, it would almost instantaneously track the changing particulate levels or dust levels inside the room that I was working on. So when I was generating dust, the device was recording it and it could tell you that it was going up too high or that it was at a comfortable level. So while I was creating dust, I could see those levels and see that it was going up or down. Uh, I was using also an air filter to kind of suck some of that dust out. And when I was cleaning up with a shop vac, I could definitely tell afterwards uh, that it had reduced the particulate matter in the air from the readings that were on the device. So it really did work well for that. Now, while I was painting, it also could tell me when the volatile organic compounds uh, were getting a little bit too high in the space and needed to vent it out. Now, you should obviously always vent out your space with a fan uh, or open a windows, but giving it to basement, not a ton of windows there. So it did show me that the VOC levels were getting kind of high so that I should just vent out the room a little bit, uh, open a door and use a fan to kind of circulate everything. But it was really interesting because I don't think normally a lot of people are looking at how much particulate matter they have in the air or the volatile organic compounds. Uh, that may be going through your air, which that could be from a painting project like it was in my case, or maybe you've got a gasoline container uh, that is leaking some fumes, or you've got something else that is generating volatile organic compounds in your home, or you've got something that's generating dust in your home, whether that be pollen, uh, mold, dander from pets, dust uh, from a renovation. So I thought, uh, in particular, that was really useful, as well as the carbon monoxide, being able to make sure that that older HVAC system and water heater uh, didn't have any leakage back into the house and it was all being exhausted from the house, which being in a basement was really helpful because carbon monoxide, it will accumulate, uh, especially if you don't have any kind of ventilation that's going to get that out of there. So a carbon monoxide detector or carbon monoxide alarm uh, is going to go off when it reaches dangerous levels. That doesn't mean that you couldn't still have carbon monoxide in your space uh, to a level that probably is unhealthy for you or could be indicative of a problem with your HVAC system or your ventilation uh, or exhaust gases in your home. 
Or uh, another example could be if you've got a garage and you start your car in there, uh, you can have carbon monoxide accumulation if there's not enough circulation of air in that room or you uh, didn't open up the garage door. So I think having that information available to see how much carbon monoxide is in an area before the alarm goes off is really helpful so you can see how it's being generated, what could be causing it, and investigate things before it's an emergency where your carbon monoxide alarm is going off. Because if your carbon monoxide alarm is going off, you need to get out of your house uh, pretty much immediately at that point. Uh, can be dangerous to your health, as well as it's accumulated so much that it's tripped off the sensor at that point, which could be pretty far away from the source. So there could be areas in your home that there's even more concentrated carbon monoxide before it gets to your actual carbon monoxide alarm. Now, this will not alarm like a carbon monoxide alarm, but you can track what's happening on your phone, as well as you can get alerts uh, on your phone through the device. So I found it really beneficial to keep track of all these things. And I see this as a great device if you're doing some renovations, uh, if you're in an area that's creating a lot of dust, or maybe you're concerned about mold or pollen, and you just wanna see what's happening to your indoor air quality. Or maybe you're in an area where you get a lot of particulate matter in the air, and you just wanna track that uh, for your overall health and see what's happening. So at the price point for the smart air quality monitor, it's giving you a lot of data that I don't think you can find from typical sensors out there with the VOC information, particulate matter, uh, as well as carbon monoxide. I thought that was really interesting. The temperature and humidity, that's great. There's a lot of things out there that can do that and track it. But the VOCs was really neat, especially if you're undergoing uh, renovations or maybe you work in a shop with uh, volatile organic compounds. Uh, the particulate matter I think is really useful, uh, especially if you have allergies, a good way to track and see what's going on with your air quality. And then the carbon monoxide, just an overall safety thing um, so that you can see how it is in your home with that buildup or accumulation or lack thereof. And you can sleep soundly at night knowing that your devices are in good working order uh, for the time being. So now let's take a look at the app and some of the tracking features on the device itself. We opened up the Amazon Alexa app, which is what the Amazon Smart Air Quality Monitor operates on. And what we did from there is just open up our Smart Air Quality Monitor device. So this is the device home screen. Once you're in there, it gives us a notification of our current air quality. So it's given us an 83 rating, and that's a zero to 100 rating. Now what we can do is click on our dashboard here, and it gives us some more parameters uh, for the air quality monitoring. So you've got temperature, you've got humidity here, uh, the PMUG over meters cubed, uh, that's your particulate matter. And then you've got CO, carbon monoxide, that's right there. And then you've got VOCs, volatile organic compounds down at the bottom. And here it just tracks your air quality and gives you a score over the week. So you can do week, uh, by the day, by the hour, and we're just gonna switch back to week there. Now, once you click down here, if you wanna learn more about indoor air quality, you can click on this. And what it does is describe to you all the different things that this does in what that means in terms of air quality. So you have an indoor air quality range, it gives you some tips here, an overall description. And what's really neat is uh, when we drill down to each one of these, it has tips and an explanation for the measurement of each one of these. So temperature, humidity, uh, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, or VOCs. So we can click on temperature and uh, you can see some of the basics here. And it's just recording the temperature. Uh, we could have it hourly, currently it's 77. Um, if you go back here, we can see it was colder that day, 52, 45. Uh, I had this in a basement and then a garage. I kind of moved around a couple different places and then I had it unplugged for two days, Friday and Saturday. Uh, so that's why there's no reading there. And then you can click on humidity. It's gonna tell you what the average humidity was, um, and then you can look at hourly or daily. So in this room, it's 24% humidity, uh, where I had it before in the garage, 45% humidity for a little bit. Now, what's neat, if you wanna learn more about humidity, is you just click down here, and then it's gonna give you some tips uh, for controlling humidity and what the measurements are, and 
maybe what is causing your humidity. Uh, so like showering, cooking, dishwashing, um, and then the health effects of humidity. So if it's too high or too low, uh, what that can cause. So we go back here and uh, then we're gonna click on PM. So this is particulate matter. Um, and here you can see this is a day I actually had this in my basement on Tuesday when I was doing some work creating a lot of dust. And uh, you can see on that day, we had 107 when on a normal day, we're around three uh, UG per meter cubed. Um, so interesting to see that there was definitely a big impact when I was doing some dust creating activities. And you can track that over the week, um, day or hour. And then down here, it just gives you an explanation. Uh, so for things that you may not be as familiar with, it's nice to have these descriptions and sources. Uh, so it talks about mold spores, dust, pollen, and wildfires uh, for particulate matter and how you can control them. So useful information here on how you can control them as well as what they are. So let's go back from particulate matter and we're gonna click on uh, the next one here, which is carbon monoxide. Um, and you can see that uh, it's relatively low. I moved this around and I wanted to uh, see what the reading was. I put this right next to something that generated a fair amount of CO uh, burning a candle uh, in here so I could see if it would change and it did. So we're at seven when typically it's around two or three uh, in the household. So interesting to see that real time feedback here. And then you can learn more about carbon monoxide and what will cause it and what some of the health effects are and uh, why you would want to avoid high levels of carbon monoxide. So we're going to click back. And then the last one that we've got in here uh, is our volatile organic compounds. So here we are in the volatile organic compounds tab. Uh, we've got a weekly and daily and hourly tracker. And then if you want to learn more about volatile organic compounds, I think this is really interesting because uh, it's something that you don't usually think about. Obviously, inhaling gasoline wouldn't be good for you. That is a volatile organic compound, but it describes some other things that could be volatile organic compounds uh, and why you want to attract those and what health effects they can cause. So some interesting stuff in here in the app. It says VOCs evaporate into the air we breathe from a wide array of sources, pesticides, um, building materials, furnishings, office equipment, craft materials, glues, um, and then the health effects of VOC. So uh, really interesting thing to track there. We're gonna go back uh, to our main screen here. And the last thing on the app that we've got is you can click up here in the settings tab and uh, it allows you to have announcements made on your Echo or Alexa devices um, when there is something detected. So you could swipe that over and then you can choose what Echo devices you'd want it announced on. And then you can also get notifications on the Alexa app when your air quality changes. So I've got those turned on. And then down here, we've just got the description and uh, the type, it's an air quality monitor. And if you wanna edit the name, you can do that up there because you can actually then use your Alexa devices to ask questions about your air quality and your Echo or ALEXA devices can respond with uh, things like the current humidity level, temperature, um, or if there is carbon monoxide, the current level of that. So kind of interesting that it integrates with Alexa because it does work on the Alexa app. So it doesn't have its own app, it just works on the Alexa app with other Alexa devices, uh, just like you would have a smart light switch or a smart thermostat maybe. In my use of the app, it's been very intuitive. The only thing that I wish would be improved is uh, currently right now on the dashboard, uh, you can track hour, day, and week but it doesn't give me an option to track monthly. I would like to see a monthly tracking option so you can kind of chart where your air quality is over time and then look at maybe different seasons, what summer is like versus winter, or maybe you live in an area where you get wildfires, see what it's like uh, in a time of where you've got wildfires versus a time that you don't have wildfires. So I think having a longer term tracking would be interesting to see how your air quality varies over different seasons. Overall, I think the Amazon Smart Air Quality Monitor is a really cool device, uh, especially for the price point. And you've got a lot of different applications for it. I do think it's nice to be able to track the air quality in your home, see if there's dust, see if there's volatile organic compounds, which could be hazardous to your health, as well as carbon monoxide, which could be hazardous to your health. I think it's really neat to be able to have the data of the indoor air quality or air quality within your home so that if you've got an issue, you can address it 
or you can confirm that everything is good in your home. So let's say you had an issue uh, that you were able to find with your smart air quality monitor, your Amazon smart air quality monitor. Uh, maybe you're having too much particulate matter go through your ventilation. Well, that means maybe it's time for a filter change or maybe you don't have an air filter in there at all and you need to put one in. Uh, maybe it's time to get an air purifier and that could be something that you could identify with the smart air quality monitor. Um, let's say it records a whole bunch of VOCs. Maybe it means you're storing chemicals inside that you shouldn't, or maybe it means that a cap is off on uh, something that vaporizes and has VOCs in it, and you need to tighten that cap. And that's the kind of information that you can get from this uh, because there are volatile organic compounds that are hazardous to your health. And then lastly, uh, the carbon monoxide, especially if you've got like a finished basement uh, or an area where you've got living space directly next to a water heater or you've got an HVAC system there. Having this is going to give you data and information so that you can act on those things so that you can have healthier air, which is better for you, obviously, uh, than breathing in a whole bunch of dust or breathing in a whole bunch of carbon monoxide or uh, volatile organic compounds. So I think it's a great device if you wanna learn more about your indoor air quality or you're investigating an issue that you may have and it empowers you with that data at a relatively good price point uh, to be able to learn some things that wouldn't be obvious to most people if you've got too much dust in your household, volatile organic compounds or carbon monoxide. It obviously does temperature and humidity as well, but there's a lot of other sensors on the market that do that as well. So this is unique and that it's got those three other items that I don't know of a lot of other devices that track those different parameters. So thank you for watching this video. Please go ahead, give us that thumbs up, subscribe, and click any of the links below if you want to support us. Now, there's also an installation video on this below. So if you do pick one of these up, go ahead and watch how to set up your Amazon Smart Air Quality Monitor. Thank you.